fails to be a priest is really distressing. No doubt, it is an auspicious thing to do. But unfortunately, most people are convinced that a priest is as unimportant as a piece of wood, and they treat him accordingly. A priest lives poorly on meager food and cannot even sleep without being criticized. While he is young, it is only natural that he should be curious about all sorts of things. And if there are women about, he will probably peep in their direction. Though to be sure, with a look of aversion on his face. What is wrong about that? Yet, people immediately find fault with him for even so small a lapse. <laughs> It should also be cloudy, but in the evening it should be clear so that the moon shines brightly in the sky and one can see the outline of the stars. On the ninth of the ninth month, there should be a drizzle from early dawn. In the seventh month, when there are fierce winds and heavy showers, it is quite cool and one does not bother to carry a fan. On such days, I find it is pleasant to take a nap, having covered myself with clothing that gives off a faint smell of perspiration. One day, when I was alone, he came up to me and said, My dear lady, I have something I must tell you at once, something that I have just heard. And what may that be, I asked. He approached my curtain. I heard someone who, instead of saying, Bring your body closer, used the phrase, Bring up your five parts. And again, I burst into laughter. One is about to say something to someone who is obviously embarrassed. But then he speaks first. That is strange. hair has been cut like a nun's. Hateful thing. One has been <laughs> foolish enough to invite a man to spend the night in an unsuitable place. And then <laughs> he starts snoring. Oh, the dreariness of it. Disagreeable is the man who, when leaving in the middle of the night, takes care to fasten the cord of his headdress. This is quite unnecessary. A good lover will behave as elegantly at dawn as at any other time. He drags himself. Don't want any 
one to oh, find you here. He gives a deep sigh, as if to say that the oh, night has not been nearly long enough, and that it is agony to leave. Once up, he does not instantly pull on his trousers. Instead, he comes close to the lady and whispers whatever was left unsaid during the night. Even when he is dressed, he still lingers, vaguely pretending to be fastening his sash. Indeed, one's attachment to a man depends largely on the elegance of his leave taking. When he jumps out of bed, scurries about the room, tightly fastens his trousers sash, stuffs his belongings into the breasts of his robe, <laughs> and then briskly secures it out of sash, one really begins to hate him. Things that should be lies. Priests. One simple thing. Snow on the houses of common people. This is especially regrettable when the moonlight shines down on it. A woman of the lower class is dressed in a scarlet trouser skirt. The sight is all too common these days. Cherry flax in the black fields are heavy now with dew. I shall stay with you till dawn, though your parents be aware. Things without merit. Rye starch that has become mixed with water. I know that this is a very vulgar item and that everyone would dislike my mentioning it. Tree. I shall say absolutely nothing about the spindle tree. Things that give us a second. The expression of a woman plucking her eyebrows. Burn. If I were to write down all my thoughts about the crane, I should become tiresome. During the short summer nights in the rainy season, one sometimes wakes up and lies in bed, hoping to be the first person to hear the hototogisu. Suddenly, towards dawn, song breaks the silence. One is charmed. Indeed, one is quite intoxicated. But alas, when the sixth month comes, the Hototogasu is silent. I really need say no more about my feelings for this bird. And I do not love the Hototogasu alone. Anything that cries out at night delights me. Except babies. Oh, it is not so bad if the person has come with the aim of clearing himself of sin. 
but even then, a very inelegant carriage is bound to make a bad effect. At the Carmel Festival, of course, such negligence is quite inexcusable. Yet there are people who actually attend the ceremony in carriages where plain white robes have been hung up instead of the proper blinds. Or even when one is a carefully equipped one's carriage in honour of the great day, making sure that the blinds and other fittings are exactly right, and is set up for the ceremony fairly confident that one presents an elegant appearance to the world, it is most unpleasant to see a nearby carriage superior to one's own. And one wonders why it had to appear at just that place. How much more gone and it must be for someone travelling in a really shabby carriage. What could be more magnificent than to see so august a personage as his majesty seated there in all his glory, honoring his mother in this way? It's a sign. Rats nest. still have no fur when they come wriggling out of their nest.
truly dilapidated. The mud wall should be falling to pieces, and if there is a pond, it should be overgrown with water plants. It is not essential that the garden be covered with sagebrush, but weeds should be growing through the sand and patches, for this gives the place a poignantly desolate look. <laughs> I greatly dislike a woman's house when it is clear that she has scurried about with a annoying look on her face, arranging everything just as it should be, and when the gate is kept tightly shut. Things that lose by being painted. Men or women who are praised in romances as being beautiful. One bright moonlit night, a messenger thrust a note into the ante room where I was staying. On a sheet of magnificent scarlet paper, I read the words. Taya is nothing. It was the moonlight that made this so delightful. I wonder whether I would have enjoyed it at all on a rainy night. So I showed about the most extraordinary air of self-satisfaction. Yet, if we stop to examine those Chinese writings of her that she so presumptuously scattered about the place, we find that they are full of imperfections. Someone who makes such an effort to be different, but that is bound to fall on people's esteem, and that can only think that her future would be a hard one. She is a gifted woman, to be sure, yet if one gives free reign to one's emotions, even in the most inappropriate circumstances, if one is to sell the least interesting thing that comes along, people are bound regarding the frivolous, and how can things turn out well for such a woman? A lean, hair-soaked man taking a nap in the daytime. Does it occur to him what a spectacle he is making of himself? Ugly men should sleep only at night, when they cannot be seen in the dark. And besides, most people are in bed themselves. But they should get up at the crack of dawn, so that no one has to see them lying down. <laughs> a pretty woman looks even prettier when she gets up on a summer's day after taking a nap. But an unattractive woman should avoid such things. For her face will be all puffy and shining, and if she is not lucky, her cheeks will have an ugly, lopsided look. When two people, having taken a nap together in the daytime, wake up and see each other's sleep swollen faces, how grimly life must seem to them! Oh! One of the reasons I do not like ugly women to wear unlined robes is that one can see their navels. Squalid things. The inside of a cat's ear. 